Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the online course on information retrieval. In the next set of videos, we will talk about a very important part of IR, which is learning to rank. And uh, these slides were created by Harry Osterhaus, who used to be a PhD student in our research group, and who actually gave this lecture within the course on information retrieval. Now he's an assistant professor at Red Bound University in Nijmegen. I really encourage you to visit his homepage and check his work on different aspects of learning to rank. Now, he also based his slides on the tutorial from CIR 2017 uh, on neural networks for IR. And a part of that tutorial was on learning to rank. And uh, the tutorial was given by many uh, former PhD students from our group from Information Retrieval Lab in the University of Amsterdam. I've further abridged these slides a little bit to make them suitable for the course, but all the core information is there. So let's begin with the lecture. So now we are talking about the third pillar of IR, as I call them, learning to rank. So we now know how to uh, evaluate what kind of metrics we optimize, which will be important today, by the way. We know how to represent documents and queries, how to match them, and we did that in a mostly uh, unsupervised way. And today we will talk about learning to rank, mostly about supervised ways uh, to match documents and queries. So let's begin with uh, the definition of learning to rank. And there is a very a good overview. It's kind of uh, old nowadays, 2009 but still it contains very important concepts, uh, many of which we will use today. So uh, Leo formulated um, the task of uh, LTRs, the task to automatically construct a ranking model using training data, importantly using training data, such that the model can sort new objects, again, importantly sort um, new objects according to their degree of relevance, preference or importance. So importantly, it's supervised training data and it's not just predicting something, it's really sorting objects. So uh, if we go back to this standard picture of IR, uh, we have a user query, we have a collection of documents and then we have a ranking system to match the two, right? So far we saw different unsupervised methods uh, like BM25 or LSI uh, that could sort these documents according to the query and produce the rank. And uh, in this set of videos, we will discuss supervised and machine learning based methods to do that. So, of course, uh, we will need certain features. And in fact, everything that we've studied so far can be used as features for learning to rank. So we studied TFID, BM25, language modeling, again, LSI, LDA, uh, doc 2 vec Whatever produces a score for a query and a document can be used already as a, as a feature. And of course, many more, uh, many of this we uh, didn't cover in the course. Uh, some of this we cover in the bachelor course, like page rank, for example. And of course, you can uh, do different types of features. You can uh, check uh, the text for spam. You can uh, try to work on the query, try to extract its intent and so on and so forth. So everything that describes query and document, query document pairs can be used as features. But uh, later on, we will actually focus not on the features because the features we've discussed quite a lot in the previous videos, we will focus on how to learn actually the model. And talking a little bit more about features, uh, there are different data sets uh, available to researchers by uh, different search engines and uh, those together with their learning training data sets, they provide a number of features up to 700 features by Yahoo. And those features, they uh, have some of this inside. So some of these data sets actually say what features that these are, some of these data sets don't say what features these are, just, just a row of numbers. Uh, but important, it's important to know that there are very many features, it's not just what six here and six here. No, it's uh, hundreds of features. Now, of course, as I said, we would like to address this particular problem, uh, this particular question. How do we combine these features? How do we create a ranking model, actually? 
And as I mentioned previously, we will use machine learning for that. So let's um, give a little bit of a formal definition. So now we um, already talked about features of various documents and query documents, and these features create a numerical vector. So if you compute BM25 score, TF, IDF score, if you compute query length or document length, and you put this all together, you, you have a n-dimensional vector. Now, what we want is we want to predict a score for each document query pair based on this vector that represents the document query pair. So we want to learn a function that um, projects from uh, n-dimensional vectors into numbers. So mathematically speaking, it's uh, again, yeah, we map vectors to real valued scores. Uh, so, well, it may look like this. We have lots of documents and we have here we have a query which is not represented in this picture and then we run this learn scoring function that assigns certain scores to every document and then we just uh rank documents based on these numbers right so this probably goes first here and um then no this goes first and this goes second and so on so um uh, talking about features uh, the last thing i'd like to mention as i said there are many features uh, there are many ways to create the features. Uh, they used to be handcrafted features for, for, for many years. Uh, recently, deep learning is used to learn features directly from data. But uh, so we can classify features in three ways. So document only features, or static features, which do not depend on the query. So these are document length or page rank for web search, for example. Um, Spam score could only be um, a document only feature. Very important features are, of course, the document query combination features. Mostly those are that we started in previous videos, like the MP5 or TFIDF or LTA. And of course, query only features like the length of the query, the intent of the query, whether it contains uh, words like images or photos or uh, some entities, and so on and so forth. So these are about features. And now, um, the data, uh, how can we perform learning to rank? There are two major ways to do learning to rank and we will focus on one of them in this set of videos. So the first and uh, the oldest, let's say, way is the offline or supervised learning to rank. We have, and as in any machine learning task, we have a set of annotated data and then we learn from that data. Of course, that's expensive and time consuming, because you have to, first of all, you have to obtain data. Uh, you have to obtain the annotations. This is very expensive and again, time consuming. Uh, but then you have the real ground truth. So, so some people actually told you that these documents are good for this queries and these documents should be ranked in a certain way. And then you really know uh, your ground truth. But that, that's, that's expensive. Now, the other way is online and counterfactual learning to rank. So you take interactions that are readily available to your system if your system is already running. So the data is almost free because your system is running, you have all the interaction data, but you don't know how to interpret that interaction data. And so in this lecture, we will cover uh, the first part, offline uh, learning to rank. And as I mentioned in, um, in the introduction video, and I will mention in the summary, there is a great tutorial uh, I think from SIGIR, again, by Harry and uh, Martin de Rijk and Rolf Jachermann on online and counterfactual evaluation and learning to rank where this other type of learning to rank is discussed in detail. So I really recommend you watching that. So we will focus on offline uh, learning to rank uh, that was historically first. And as we said, it's, well, since you have ground truth, it's a little bit more reliable in a certain way. But it's expensive because you have to obtain annotations and the annotations or judgments you obtain in the very same way as you do when you create a task collection for evaluation. So basically you hire annotators or judges, judges and you train them, you pay them, then you give them train, uh, test queries, training queries actually. Uh, you select a certain amount of documents per query as we discussed during evaluation videos it's better to select fewer documents, but more queries. That's the rule of thumb, but of course, based on your application, that may be different. 
and then you just show those uh, pairs to annotators and uh, get some uh, label could be zero one it could be from zero to four so this process <coughs> sorry is exactly the same as uh, for creating a test collection for offline evaluation so now you have data you have features again we, we discussed quite a lot about features now this is the data and now we need to actually learn the model that ranks documents so we have uh, features representing the query document pair we have for each query document pair, we have a label from zero to four. So what do we want? We want this function that maps from uh, a real uh, uh, value vector to a real value, or well, maybe a value from zero to four, maybe a real value between zero and four. And of course we want, uh, well, this model to be such that it ranks documents uh, best according to certain validation metrics. So, how do we how do we actually learn this model and that will be the content of most of the subsequent videos so um, we'll discuss three approaches and we will start with the with the point wise approach <laughs>